Hello everybody, my name is Eric and welcome to the Windows 9X video that I promised before. Uh, this ended up being, okay let's fix this first of all, but this ended up being a million times hard. It's probably, well no, it is, it is like the, the most challenging video I have ever made. And I think we're at the end of the tunnel. So if you're wondering, yes, this is double virtualization. The reason we're doing this is because the way that my opening to the internet system works is that I am using, okay, good, it's here, a dedicated server, which is running Proxmox, and then I am running uh, the operating system under it. So I tried for literally a day to install Windows 98 or or ME on Proxmox, and you can do it, but you cannot, at least I can't get the network adapter to work. So what's the workaround? Well, nested virtualization, because you can do the same trick in VirtualBox. So I installed VirtualBox in Windows 7 under uh, Proxmox. It, it'll be a bit slower, but this operating system is older than I am, so it should be fine. <laughs> of course, on these old versions of Windows, you could actually install it in a different folder if you didn't want to put it in C Windows, but I'll just uh, go with tradition. Okay, so it seems like it's semi worked now unfortunately it's running pretty slow probably because of nested virtualization i was i think some of this is just going to be graphics glitches but yeah it's not running great but okay so we're not going to get a, oh well it seems like it's actually started it's just not showing up for whatever reason but we do now have closed program open so we can see what's open and now we just kind of have to wait uh get a pretty good idea that I'm just gonna check IE but I, I think IE is working okay and I've made it usable so the trick was to download an older version of VirtualBox and just forego hardware virtualization uh, what this does is it just means it runs in software which works perfectly fine on ancient versions of Windows I had thought about this but I, I don't know why I didn't do it uh, it is now I, I don't know a thousand times uh, faster so don't be an idiot. Don't try it. Don't try nested virtualization. I've had it work decently uh, on modern CPUs, but I think it really doesn't work well on Intel CPU. Okay, and that's how you know it's working. We're about to view over a secure connection. Uh, and, okay, it can't be displayed, but that may just be... I'm pretty sure that was given it redirected to HTTPS. For whatever reason, I, I don't know why, but Google is like the one website that works on IE4. Now I'm going to try an Nmap. Which is a simple tool. Uh, this is the same thing that the hackers use. And this allows you to see what ports are open, which it could give them an idea of what's vulnerable. Uh, okay. Okay, filtered. I'm trying to remember... Uh, is there even SMB on this version of Windows? Because that's like the main vulnerability. Obviously, I, I think SMTP is just blocked by uh, my internet provider. Because, you know, even, even if you have a pretty unrestricted server, unless you ask for SMTP, they don't enable it. Because SMTP, having SMTP open, and I, and I, I don't want it on this because, of course, uh, I, I don't want to inadvertently participate in spam but having SMTP open just attacks a ton of hacker attention and very few people actually want to run their own email servers now let's see if process explorer finally works now that uh, we have a much more performant system so i found a different site that claims to have a different version of process explorer that might work in uh, Windows 98, so we're going to try this out, because the 12.04 uh, definitely doesn't work in Windows 98. Oh, we can just do it here. And then we simply uh, use a mount this as an ISO. This is pretty much how I do all of my inter file, because CD images are great, because they're one way. You don't have to worry about any sort of escape, whereas you would... Uh, if you just did a shared folder. I 
And there we go. It is possible. Okay, we just needed a different version. So here we go. We now have SysInternals Process Explorer so we can actually see what's happening. And this is the version I'm actually running. Okay, and it's got some other information, some mutexes. I find it kind of cool that mutexes even existed uh, all the way back here. Still a useful programming concept. And this is basically the same. Oh, wow, this is identical. I, I don't know uh, if this is probably made later. Is This looks pretty much identical to David Plummer's uh, Task Manager, but... Well, I guess it technically wasn't later because it existed in NT4. So it did exist, it just wasn't in Windows 98 or ME. I think because it uses a bunch of... Yeah, no, this is definitely, definitely going to be similar because... So now we just kind of have to wait. Hopefully we won't have to wait too long. Okay, and the other thing I found out is that from the host... Uh, we can run Wireshell. Now, we, we should ideally, we should uh, filter it for... But we can see. Uh, 53 is the host, 52 is the guest. Okay. See what this packet... Okay. We are stalling to receive packets. I did test it with an Nmap from my own system. Okay. And we can also, on the host, we can who is and see who these uh, packets might be that are coming in. It's got to install how it is on this computer. Okay. And um, uh, it's an Amazon Hong Kong. Okay. I know we had a few uh, Alibaba hits before. Uh, this is another AWS. Now, the kind of funny thing is that you'll see both hits from hackers and also hits from so-called security companies that run humongous amounts of Nmaps for whatever reason. Oh, oh. Oh, was that, was that me that did that, or was that... Okay, yeah, that was me. <laughs> My bad. So, no no processes have stolen a jet, uh, but the uh, Wired is certainly aware of our presence, and we are stalling to receive, ooh, tons of hits. It's always amazing to me how quickly these Nmaps still coming in. Within a few minutes, now part of that is because I have a data center IP address, so that's always going to be on a higher alert because it's usually exposed, but the fact that in a few minutes we're getting bombarded with port scanning, some of these are security companies, some of these are hackers, some of these are like worms that are already installed on a different computer and are checking if uh, this system is going to be infectable. And still no new processes, but now we're getting uh, these streams of TCP packets that might be more accurate. You see these more look the part of things that could... I'm not quite sure what this is. Yeah, I'm not seeing anything obviously identifiable. It does not look like an SMB packet, which is where I would guess a lot of this is going to go because SMB 1.0 is very vulnerable. Okay. Uh, we may have hope. I don't know why it... Because it seems like it, it could... That could be some sort of malicious hook, or it could be something totally useless. That's the first time I've seen anything suspicious launch, so we're kind of... Let's see. We can go ahead. 
Let's go over to schedule tasks and just see if anything's been added. Tune up application start. And let's see what. Yeah, this doesn't look malicious because if it was, it would probably run more frequently than that. Okay, so I've installed the server SMB process, I think, because it seems like otherwise nothing is going to happen. So let's hope that I'm right and that if we install the server edition, everything's good. Okay, so it's up. It's now got network support. And and uh, if nothing uh, happens now, I think we can safely say that Security by obscurity does work if you're willing to go far enough back in time. There isn't a lot of benefit to writing exploits for Windows 98 these days. And it's possible there just aren't enough uh, internet-connected Windows 98 machines for any sort of malicious uh, worm to survive. Because it would have to, at least, e even if, of course... Even if it's not exposed, if it was installed, it could still sort of spread, but... Okay. Well, I'm going to give up on this for now, and the only thing I can think to do is leave it overnight and just see what happens come the morning. But I'm not... I, th I think it's simply a case of there is just no market uh, for Windows 98 anymore, so it's just sort of benefiting from security by obscurity. And the ultimate conclusion is that... For whatever reason, uh, 98 seems to be A-OK. -okay. So I think the only thing left is possibly to try 2000, because 7 is safe, XP is not, and 98 is safe. I think this is just a case of security by obscurity, where there's so little uh, remaining reasons to attack 98, or, or it just doesn't have as much vulnerable online services. So that's all for now. Bye.